Hi guys, Cinematic Recap here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain an American fantasy adventure and comedy movie, called Gulliver's Travels. A mailroom worker named Lemuel Gulliver wakes up in his apartment. He goes about his usual morning routine before heading to work at the New York City newspaper. There, he hires a new employee named Dan and strikes up a friendship with him. While delivering mail to other employees, Gulliver meets Darcy Silverman, a journalist he has long had a crush on but never confessed his feelings to. Sometime later, Dan comes into Gulliver's room and shows him a letter announcing his promotion to head of the mailroom. He also claims that Gulliver will never be promoted because he is too afraid to speak up. Devastated, Gulliver leaves the room and notices Darcy working late. Taking the opportunity, he gathers the courage to approach her and decides to impress her. He convinces her that he could write a report about his false extensive world travels, saying his dream is to become a writer. Darcy is intrigued and asks him to submit his writing to her the next morning. That night, Gulliver suffers from writer's block, so he decides to plagiarize a report from other publications on the internet. The following day, he submits the report to Darcy, who is impressed by his writing and assigns him a new task, to travel to the Bermuda Triangle and write an article about the legends of ships mysteriously disappearing there. Gulliver eagerly accepts the task in the hopes of impressing Darcy further. Upon arriving in Bermuda, Gulliver is picked up by a local man who offers to show him around. Gulliver accepts the offer and the man takes him to rent a ship. The man gives Gulliver instructions on how to operate the boat properly before he sets out on his journey into the Bermuda Triangle alone. He spends his first few lonely hours reading magazine and drinking a few cans of coke. However, after falling asleep at the helm of his ship, Gulliver is caught in a freak storm and the ship is overwhelmed by a waterspout. A few moments later, Gulliver washes up unconscious on the shore of Lilliput and is shocked to see some tiny men standing on top of his chest. The leader of the tiny people, General Edward Edwardian, confirms Gulliver as a beast for some reason, so they pinned him on the ground with tiny ropes and wood. Confused and frightened, Gulliver breaks free from the ropes and is deemed dangerous by the citizens because of his size. Because of that, Edward orders his soldiers to bring Gulliver down by attaching their hooks to his pants, causing him to fall unconscious. Shortly after that, Gulliver is taken to the kingdom of Lilliput, and the citizens come out of their home to look closer at the beast. He is pulled into the royal palace and is presented to the king of Lilliput, King Theodore. Edward claims that Gulliver is a spy from their enemy kingdom, Blefusha, so they decide to imprison him in a cave. There, he meets another prisoner named Horatio who was jailed by Edward for loving Princess Mary of Lilliput, despite Edward also pursuing her. Soon, Edward takes both Gulliver and Horatio to plough a field, utilizing Gulliver's strength. However, they are suddenly interrupted by the sound of a bell, signaling that Blefushin has attacked the palace. It turns out that they are planning to kidnap Mary and start burning the palace down. Because of this, Edwards rushes there to save the palace, but he does not allow anyone to save the princess as he wants to look heroic in front of her. However, Horatio decides to free Gulliver from the plow machine so that he can save the princess before Edward. Not only that, Gulliver also ends up rescuing King Theodore from a fire by urinating on the palace, which earns him the admiration of the citizens. Edward, however, is annoyed by Gulliver's heroic actions. Following this, King Theodore decides to release him and Horatio from prison and declares him as a hero to the Lilliputians. He also invites everyone for a fest at night to celebrate the occasion. Later, King Theodore asks Gulliver where he comes from, and he responds that he is from Manhattan. Furthermore, Gulliver also lies that he is the president of Manhattan. The next day, the citizens of Lilliput build a massive home for Gulliver with lavish amenities, including a theater that can accommodate the entire kingdom. Everyone watches a drama of the sinking Titanic, which Gulliver claims is the story of his life. While many of them are moved, Edward remains unconvinced of his story. Sometime later, Gulliver helps Horatio to impress Princess Mary, and their effort seems to be fruitful. Meanwhile, King Theodore dispatches a search party to locate for Gulliver's washed-up boat. They eventually discover it near the shore, and Gulliver is overjoyed to find that his cell phone is still working. Unfortunately, he receives a series of angry voicemails from Darcy, who has discovered his plagiarism and now hates him. In addition, she also has to travel to Bermuda Triangle to do the research. Upon learning this, Gulliver decides to remain in Lilliput permanently and not return home. As time passes, Edward becomes increasingly furious due to the luxurious accommodations that have been built for Gulliver. He even tells King Theodore that he has suspicions about Gulliver, but the king does not believe him. Instead, the king appoints Gulliver as an honorary general of the Lilliputian army complete with uniform and demotes Edward to vice-general. In a vengeful act, 
Edward intentionally deactivates Lilliput's defense system, prompting the Blefushan navy to launch an attack and fire cannonballs at Lilliput. The king quickly orders Gulliver, now a general, to stop the attack. Gulliver undresses and steps into the water, splashing around and successfully fending off the armada, thanks to his invulnerability to the cannonballs. For the next few days, Gulliver's wishes are fulfilled by the people of Lilliput. They even construct a model of Times Square to make him feel at home. Moreover, the soldiers help cut his hair and give him massages. One night, Princess Mary and Edward get into an argument, in which she claims to not loving him. Because of that, an angered Edward defects to the Blefushans and brings with him blueprints of a robot he made from a page in Gulliver's Guitar Hero 3 game manual. The Blefushan king agrees to assist him in constructing the robot, and they eventually complete it in secret. A few days later, the bells of the palace suddenly ring five times, indicating the greatest threat to Lilliput. Gulliver prepares for the attack, only to be surprised by a colossal robot piloted by Edward standing in front of him. Edward immediately challenges him to a duel, which Gulliver inevitably accepts. However, Edward's robot is much stronger than Gulliver and eventually overpowers him, leading Gulliver to accept his defeat and admit to the people that he is just the guy from the mailroom and nothing more. Just then, Edward banishes Gulliver to a forbidden place called the island where we dare not go. Upon awakening on the shore, he is snatched up by a giant little girl. Apparently, the island is the home of giants. When Gulliver wakes up, he finds himself in a pink dress in a bedroom of a doll house. Unluckily, the giant little girl plays roughly with him, treating him like a doll. When she stares emotionlessly and ominously at him through the wall of his bedroom in a doll house, Gulliver screams fearfully, prompting her to force feed him an excessive amount of milk from a bottle. In the meantime, Darcy also washes up on the shore of the Lilliput. Edward recognizes her as Gulliver's friend and imprisons her in the cave. Seeing this, Horatio decides to travel to the island where we dare not go and informs Gulliver about Darcy's imprisonment. Soon, Gulliver narrowly escapes with Horatio and flies back to Lilliput using a parachute that he took from the skeleton of a dead U.S. Air Force pilot sitting in the dollhouse. Upon his return, Gulliver immediately goes to the cave to free Darcy. At that moment, he finally confesses his feelings to her, and she forgives him for his mistakes. The next morning, Gulliver once again accepts another duel from Edward, this time not only for Lilliput's freedom but for its fate as well. The two get into a fight, but Edward easily overpowers him at first. Knowing this, Horatio decides to help Gulliver by getting inside the robot. After a brief fight, he manages to defeat Edward from inside, eventually disabling the robot's electrocuting weapon. Afterwards, Gulliver seizes the opportunity to finish off the robot. Everyone erupts in cheers, including Darcy who is also celebrating the win. Due to his bravery, Horatio is hailed as a hero and receives King Theodore's permission to court the princess. On the other hand, Edward, who has reached the point of insanity, threatens to kill Princess Mary. However, the princess has finally had enough of Edward's behavior and punches him in the face in frustration. When King Theodore and the Blefushan King are about to initiate the war again, Gulliver steps in to stop them and then helps make peace between the rival island nations. Eventually, Gulliver and Darcy finally return to New York City on their repaired ship. The movie ends with Gulliver, now a legitimate travel writer, taking Darcy to lunch while holding hands, after returning from another travel assignment. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.